Welcome to worship at Trinity Downtown. Whether you're with us online or here in person, we're glad to have all of us together as we praise God for his goodness and grace to us. In our worship today, we will be acknowledging a baptism that took place yesterday, and we will also be welcoming first candidates for First Communion today. In the readings, you'll hear things that'll just leave us, we want to scratch our heads wondering how God does things. The prophet Isaiah says, God's ways are not our ways. Um, the, uh, in Matthew, we hear the, the, the first will be last and the last will be first. God does things differently than we do, and it's a good thing because he, in his grace and mercy, loves and cares for all of us and makes sure that we receive all that comes with the, the, the blessings to us. So may the Lord bless your worship today, um, and we begin by singing the hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. Yesterday, at this baptismal font, the daughter of Adam and Hope Johnson was brought into the Christian faith. Her name was Ju is June Finley. And so, uh, as would be the practice, I would announce to all of you that the kingdom of God continues to grow, and the newest member of the kingdom yesterday at 1130 was June Finley. So would you all please join me in saying, welcome June Finley to the family of God. The name of our great God, great and gracious God, was put on June yesterday in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each day we're invited to put that name on us as we begin our day and as we begin our worship. And so we do that now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, 
Help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th and 20th chapters. Then Peter said in reply to Jesus, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are last will be, or many who are first will be last and the last first. The kingdom of heaven, he said, is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them to his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went going out again about the sixth hour, and the ninth hour he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired uh, about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the masters, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have been borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree to work for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last workers as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I want to do, to to do with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Watching it later in the week. And boys and girls, it's wonderful to actually have boys and girls in our sanctuary today. It's wonderful to be with you. Um, I'm going to ask a favor of the boys and girls that are here. If you wish to do this, Can you stand just so I can see where you're at today? No requirement. If you don't want to, that's okay. But I just just stand for a few minutes with me so I can see you a little bit better. Raise your hand at home or here in the sanctuary, boys and girls, if you have ever said this to your mom and dad. 
that's not fair. <laughs> raise your hand if you've ever said that to your mom and dad. That's not fair. I'm going to raise mine twice because I probably still say that to my mom and dad. You know, we have a thing about, that's one of the ideas my kids figured out what they thought fairness meant pretty early. That's one of the things. Mama, dada, that's not fair. Okay, and so sometimes life doesn't seem to be fair. I think I've probably told you this before. I, I'm the oldest of four boys. Raise your hand if you're an oldest. All right, and yes, the burden is real. So um, it is something that with four boys, and my, my baby brother's 10 years younger than I am, and so there were a lot of times that he would say to my mom and dad, that's not fair that Matt gets to do this. Why can't I do this? Because he was younger. They wanted to keep him safe. Well, then years later, when he was the same age I was then, it was amazing the things my parents let him do. <laughs> curfew? What curfew? You know, and so there were times where I probably thought or even said to my parents, that's not fair. I had to be in by 10 when I was in high school. And then Steve doesn't even have a curfew. We have this thing about fairness. But, you know, fairness doesn't always mean equal. We sometimes think fairness means the same thing for everybody. And in, in the gospel, the pastor Dorn just read, we find out that everybody got the same thing, but how long the people worked was not equal. And so I want you to listen to that idea. I, for boys and girls, I think this sermon series that we're doing right now, this is designed for you because Jesus tells parables. He tells stories because he wants people to understand what the kingdom of God is like. And so I want you to listen carefully to that today, and I think it's going to be a great, uh, great uh, sermon series. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love, and thank you for sending Jesus to be our Lord and Master and Savior. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. All right, have a great day. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's good to have more of you here today than we even had last week. That's wonderful. And a reminder to all of you that are here and in, uh, watching online that if you do want to come and worship with us in person, we ask you to uh, RSVP ahead of time so we can make sure we've got proper social distancing for everyone. I want to say thank you to all of you for wearing masks today. Even though you may or may not like it, we ask you to wear them all the time except when it comes to communion um, out of respect and love for the, for the folks that you're worshiping with here. We're very, very grateful. Um, I also want to let you know that Haley Davison, who is our DCE um, that we have called to serve with us here in, with, in the area of children or youth and children's ministries, moved into her apartment yesterday. We'd like to really help her feel welcome. So if you uh, would like to give a little special gift, you know what it's like if you're moving into a new place. There are always things you need or you're tired and you don't feel like cooking anything and could I just order something or go out for something. If you'd like to give her a little gift to help her feel welcome, uh, you, I didn't, you're welcome to do that, and uh, uh, you can just uh, send her a little gift or send it here, and we'll make sure that she gets that. Um, today, we're beginning a sermon series that uh, uh, looking at the parables some, that Jesus told that are recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. And um, I, I'm looking forward to this series. And I was always told that the definition of a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. But I like the tag that we've got with, the, with this series that, uh, that says parables, small stories, big ideas. Because Jesus' parables really help us to think not only about who our great God is, but how we are to be as his people. 
So today is the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And spoiler alert, it's not about grapes, it's about grace. So uh, let me give you the context of this parable uh, as, as we go forward. And the context is this. A rich young man had come up to Jesus and, and asked him uh, what he must do, what good things he must do to enter eternal life. The dialogue recorded in Matthew 19 is very interesting. As Jesus tries to help this man to understand there is no good thing you can do to earn eternal life, Jesus was trying to help him to see that he alone, Jesus, is the Savior and that through him is the only way that this man would have eternal life. Well, the fellow was all caught up in his wealth and, um, uh, and Matthew tells us he, the rich young man went away sad from Jesus because he had great possessions. This young man had made his possessions his God and was relying on that, the security of his wealth rather than on the security of salvation in Jesus. At that point, then, Jesus turned to the, the disciples and said, it's easier for uh, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, which floored the disciples because they thought, surely this rich man would have been an easy candidate for eternal life. What Jesus was pointing out to them was that with wealth, there comes, there's nothing wrong with wealth itself, but there comes a spiritual danger to rely on the wealth instead of Jesus. Well, Peter was thinking about all of this, and as he listened to what Jesus had to say, he then asked this question, Lord, we've left everything to follow you, what, what then will we have? In other words, Peter got to thinking about compensation. What would, they, what would the disciples get because they're early followers of Jesus? Would they get something special? Jesus acknowledged their unique position as his disciples. They were among the first believers. And so Jesus makes this promise to them. He says... Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is a very special promise that Jesus makes to Peter and the disciples. We don't know the details of it, but Jesus says here that the disciples will participate in the judgment on the last day. I don't know how that, what that looks like, but they will. So that must have made Peter feel really good, and the disciples feel really good that they were somebody special. But Jesus also knew them well enough to say, before you even get caught up in thinking, oh, we're better than you guys, Jesus adds this, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or land for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. And then adds, but many who are last, first will be last and the last first. Jesus wants them to remember that while you may have a great position, you're all equal before God and all blessed by God. So he tells this parable. It's a neat parable. This owner of a vineyard has a harvest ready. And so he goes to the marketplace where there are workers standing around and brings on a crew. This is at 6 a.m., the first hour of the day. By 9 o'clock, he sees there's so much to do that he goes back to the marketplace and brings on more workers. And he does this again at noon and at three, brings on more workers. I, we would go to my grandparents' farm every summer when I was growing up, and one of the things that I heard at the farm was, you make hay when the sun shines. When the, when the hay is ready to, to, to gather up, you do it. You don't wait because the rain will ruin it. 
this man knew that he had to get all those grapes in because they were ripe. Now was the time to do it. And so he even went back at the 11th hour. Now, have you ever used that term, the 11th hour? If you have, it comes from this parable. Because that's how the Romans reckoned a day. There was the first hour, the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour. The, that's how the Romans reckoned the day. The 11th hour was that last hour of the 12-hour workday. And so here's what Jesus says. About the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing there. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. Now, I want to point out a few things at this point about this parable. First of all, Jesus is not here uh, saying that these guys were lazy. They wanted to go to work. They've been waiting, hoping that they could work. Second, something that you may have noticed in the parable is the only people that were promised a specific amount for their work that day were the people that were hired at 6 a.m. The owner said, I will pay you a denarius. All the others who were brought on through the day were told, I will pay you what's right. And they were willing to work for that. But the last point I want to make right now is this. The reference to the owner of the vineyard is the key to decoding the story. Because in the Greek it reads, Lord of the vineyard. The owner is the Lord of the vineyard. And that's a reference directly back to Jesus. So, at the end of the day, when the work ceased... The owner of the vineyard, the Lord of the vineyard, tells his foreman, line up all the workers in reverse order. Hire the, I want the ones who started last to get paid first. And so the foreman did that. And following the Lord of the vineyard's instructions, he gave all those fellows that started at the last moment, at the 11th hour, a denarius, a full day's wage. And all of the others after them got the same, a denarius, a full day's wage. Which was surprising to all of the, the workers in the vineyard. So the, the, the group that had started at the beginning of the day, I'm sure we're watching this thinking, this is great. If those guys all got a denarius, we'll surely get more because we worked all day long. And when they got paid the same amount as everybody else, they were upset. You'd be upset too, wouldn't you? I'd be upset. If this happened where you worked, there'd be complaints to the HR department. The manager of HR would be in talking to the CEO. There would be some attorney ready to litigate this immediately. The equal work for equal pay. This is not how you do it. I would equate this to, just so that we get a true understanding of this fairness thing. Thank you for bringing it up, Matthew. Um, this is like the kid who goes to high school and goes for one month and graduates with the senior who has gone for four years to high school. This is like the young upstart who comes into the place that you work at, works there for three months, where you've worked for 20 years, and then gets the promotion that was yours. And you're like, what's that? We'd be upset. So that's when the owner of the vineyard who's listening to these guys grumble about how hard they worked all day, pulls them aside and reminds them, in the morning when I said I would pay you a denarius, you looked pretty happy with that. 
And I haven't broken any laws here. I haven't wronged you. You said you'd work for a denarius, and that's what you got. Then the owner says, take what, belong, uh, take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I gave to you. And adds, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me, or do you begrudge my generosity? While it may seem unfair, it's at this point that we get, get a chance to see what God's grace and mercy is really like. That he does things different than what, our, what we feel rights and privileges should be. It's God's prerogative to hear that he gives us all the same grace. So think about it. The person that you put into your head that would say, oh, what a terrible person, what a scoundrel he's lived his whole life um, in such a bad way. But who comes to faith in Jesus all of a sudden gets the same grace you do, who have been a part of the church for your whole life. This is like the disciples standing there watching Jesus die on the cross and say to the guy, the criminal next to him, today you're with me in paradise, who had just come to faith. And they had followed him for three years. In one sense, you'd go, well, that's not fair. On the other hand, we look at that and say, praise the Lord. Because the payment that we deserve would be eternal punishment. And guess who got that? The perfect Son of God. His payday was torture and death on Good Friday so that we would not get what we deserve, but a payday that means we have a place in the family of God. Now, I want to point out one other thing about this particular verse where it says, where the owner of the vineyard says, or do you begrudge my generosity? The reason why I highlight this verse is because in the Greek it reads differently. Here's how it reads in the Greek. Jesus says, or is your eye evil because I am good? Listen to that again. Or is your eye evil because because I'm good. Jesus' point is, if so long as you keep your eye on God and on his blessing, you're fine. It's when our eye starts looking at what others are getting and the blessings they have that all of a sudden we start complaining and our eye becomes evil. Jesus says, keep your focus on me and on the blessings that I give and then reminds the disciples, so the last will be first and the first last. So how do we, what do we take away from this parable? What should we go away with today? How do we keep our eyes from turning evil, keeping our eyes on Jesus? How do we do that? My suggestion, do something unsettling. Do something that surprises people, the gracious thing. Serve someone who doesn't expect you to serve them. Love a child. Give something to somebody in a way that the, which they would never would have expected it and would be so surprised. All of the workers were surprised at the grace of the vineyard owner. You and I are called into the vineyard too. And he has promised us his grace and mercy. So let's share that and surprise others with his love and grace and forgiveness too. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, uh, we remember that worshiping the Lord includes worshiping the Lord with our tithes and offerings. For the folks who are worshiping here today, as you leave, and you'll be, by the way, uh, ushered out by row from back to front, as you leave, there'll be a box by the back door where you can leave your gift to the Lord. 
For those of you worshiping online, you can uh, mail in your gift to uh, Trinity Lutheran Church at our address, 800 Houston Avenue, or you can go to our website at www.trinitydt.org and follow the instructions on the giving tab uh, to give your gift, or you can drop it off here during the week. We hear the worship uh, offering. And for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, who calls us to work in your vineyard, Keep our eyes focused on your blessing and strengthen us so that we may use the time, abilities, and resources you so generously provide to bring many to saving faith. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we thank and praise you for the sacrifice made at the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins and secure our salvation. Open the eyes and ears of those who do not yet know the wonderful blessing of forgiveness, life, and eternal life. Through your word and the witness of those who work in your vineyard, may they become partakers of your generous grace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, as storms approach our coast again, we ask that you would preserve and protect all who are in its path from harm and danger. Watch over first responders who are called up for help. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, hear the cries of all who call out to you for comfort, healing, and relief, including Alan Ellis, Elaine Kieschnick, and all those on our prayer list. Visit and relieve them from their ailments according to your gracious will. And as we're able, use us as your instruments to increase their sense of peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, be with health care workers teachers, government leaders, and all who find their jobs difficult as a result of this COVID pandemic. We ask that you would guide those working to find a vaccine that one may be found quickly. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, bless the homes and families of our congregation. Especially, we ask that you would bless Rick and Sherry Johnson as they celebrate their 34th wedding anniversary. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, preserve our nation and our world from calamity and terror. Curb those who seek to destroy life and encourage all those in political office to strive for justice and truth that life may be appropriately treasured and safeguarded. Be with all those who have have elected to serve in the military that they may know the constancy of your care as they endeavor to protect life and preserve freedom. Lord, in your mercy, Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who had taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Standing before me today are candidates... uh, who will be received today for the first time for communion. They had gone through classes to to be able to attend First Communion back in February-ish time frame. And uh, uh, with the COVID pandemic, never got a chance to be acknowledged and welcomed to the Lord's table. So uh, that's what we'll do today. Um, Three of this group 
Um, we're welcome to the Lord's table in uh, small family gatherings uh, last weekend, and uh, the, 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 you see their picture now. Um, so, as you prepare to come to the Lord's table, I have some questions to ask you. This is the final exam, so to speak. Uh, you may not have been aware that there was a final exam, but there is, all right? Because the Apostle Paul says, let us examine ourselves as we come to the Lord's table. So here's the questions I've got for you. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ His only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, true God and true man, is your Lord? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe that you are a sinner? If so, answer, Yes, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you and shed his blood for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe that in the Lord's Supper he gives you his true body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins and to strengthen your faith in him and your love toward others? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you intend to continue to hear and receive the instruction of your Lord, confess your sins, and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully throughout your life? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. I therefore invite you to the Lord's table to receive Christ's precious body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Parents, sponsors, and members of Trinity, the whole church shares with you the responsibility and concern for the ongoing instruction and spiritual care of these young people. I now ask you, will you intercede for them in prayer and as much as you are able to give them your counsel and aid that in communion with the church they may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ? If so, will you answer by saying, we will with the help of God? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose Son Jesus Christ loved the young and called them to himself, we ask you to bless these young people, strengthen them in the faith through the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, that they may grow spiritually and bring forth the fruits of faith in a life of love toward others to the praise and honor of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We rejoice with thankful hearts in your confession of faith, and as you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his holy supper, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. So today we welcome Ansley Rose Carroll. John Francis Leonard, Jr., Mark Aiden Andrew Menke, and Elkin Allen Vandenberg. Would you please turn and face the congregation? And would you join me in acknowledging their achievement? Go in peace, serve the Lord. And if all, all of you will take your communion kits out now. You know, I ask those questions of all of the candidates for First Communion. And I hope you were listening and thinking about how you would answer them too, but I want to circle back around to one of those questions. Are you a sinner? And do you recognize that and are you sorry for your sins? I won't tell you which candidate it was, but one candidate sat and thought about that for a minute and went, is this, a, I think was running through their mind or his mind, was it a trick question or not? 
But the truth is, and the answer given was correct, yes, is that we are all sinners, and we are all in need of forgiveness. And one of the ways in which God gives us that forgiveness is through the Lord's Supper. Because with this bread and wine, it isn't just bread and wine. Jesus says, it is my body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of your faith. And if you share this understanding of this is what is happening at the Lord's, in this meal, you're welcome to the Lord's table today. So, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. So if you'll open the, the package with the bread in it and hold it before you, the body of Christ for you, take and eat. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So now open the portion of your package with the wine and hold it before you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast and true faith to life everlasting. Amen. And now take into your hearts and your homes the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.